Welcome to Design for the Creative Mind, a podcast for interior designers and creative entrepreneurs to run their business with purpose, efficiency, and passion. Because while every design is different, the process should remain the same. Prepare yourself for some good conversations with amazing guests, a dash of Jesus, and a touch of the woo-woo, and probably a swear word or two. If you're ready to stop trading your time for money and enjoy your interior design business, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Michelle Lynn. back everybody. I'm so excited that you're here and I know that I say that every single time. But I just love what I get to do and that is to have some wonderful conversations with wonderful people. So let me introduce you today to Casey Ackerman. She helps business owners save 10 hours a week through a project management tool called ClickUp. So Casey, thanks for being here and and am I correct is ClickUp a a, a, a project management tool? It is. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be chatting with you today. Um, But yes, ClickUp is a project management tool. So, okay. I've heard of ClickUp. I've never used it. What is it? (laughs) So it, it's for me personally, and especially in the space that we're in, um, it's definitely a project management tool for businesses. There are other amazing features to ClickUp as well. So ClickUp has um, form capabilities, they have docs, and they have kind of a table view. So you can definitely start to hone in on bigger pieces than just the project management side. But mm-hmm. if we're talking about just comparison, so if if you've heard of Trello, Asana, Monday, Basecamp, any of those, that's very comparable yeah. to that. Okay. So why do you love ClickUp? I love ClickUp because it allows you to grow with it. So when I first started my business, I used Trello and I feel like probably everyone out there has used Trello at some point, typically at the very Mm -hmm. beginning stages. Um, But I just quickly hated it, to be honest. (laughs) And um, I grew out, I grew out of it very quickly because it just didn't make sense. There was, you know, just stuff everywhere. And also once you start to add on, you know, like a virtual assistant or a team member Mm -hmm. in your office, you know, in your studio, Trello doesn't work. It just doesn't. And so it's very basic for me. Yeah, exactly. It's like that basic piece. And so I dabbled a little bit with some of the other ones and ClickUp just really spoke to me in the capabilities, Mm -hmm. like I mentioned before of like forms and docs and different stuff. And, and I've been using ClickUp for, for three years now, and I don't use Google suite anymore outside of my email. So I, it has replaced docs for me. It's replaced Google forms. I can build pretty much any process inside there. So what I love about it is I get to start my day and end my day in one place, mm-hmm. which is ClickUp for me. That is nice. It makes uh, it makes my day to day so easy. <laughs> that definitely says a lot because I know that as business owners, which is what our audience prevalently is, is that we do we we click back and forth and we we go to different platforms and different places to get what we need and kind of Frankenstein them together sometimes. So that's yeah. interesting. I didn't realize that ClickUp can replace like, are you saying it kind of replaces Google Drive or yeah. just the, yeah. the docs aspect of it? Oh, no, so it you stores can, everything too. Yeah. So I have, I use it for some storing capabilities. I use, I will say I use Google Drive for one thing and I have a freebie and I store it in Google Drive just because of the sharing capabilities for that one thing. But when we're talking about working one-on-one with clients, I don't use Google Drive. I use ClickUp. So ClickUp has this awesome feature where you can build like a portal, if you will, um, Mm -hmm. for your client to log into and see this. It's called a dashboard. And they have everything they need right there, which is really awesome. So we're not, you know, sifting back and forth through Google Drive folders. Another thing that um, would frustrate me is when I would have to go to a different window, if you will, or different tab, Mm -hmm. it's like distraction city. (laughs) And so I would, I would like open a tab and then I'd be like, oh, look at that thing. Why don't I work on that? Or why don't I do this? Or why don't I do that? Or like, what's going on on my phone since I have to redirect my brain, you know? So it just, 
it eliminates a lot of that and it allows you to literally be more productive in less time. And I know that's kind of a, mm-hmm. a hot little keyword phrase, but it really is true. No, and that that makes sense. I think that, you know, whatever you, whatever platform you find that works for your brain. So for example, when I first got on Trello, I didn't fully understand it. It it felt overwhelming. And then once I learned it, I was like, okay, this isn't overwhelming. It's 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 re- rather simplistic. Yeah. But having used it for a while, I just think it's important to find that platform that speaks to you. And then as your business grows and as your needs grow, you have these other opportunities. Yeah. So how do you how do you use it? So you're an OBM, an online business manager. Yep. Who, who let, let's let's dive into that for a second. What is an OBM and how can it benefit entrepreneurs? Yeah, so an OBM, like you said, online business manager, it really allows you to get out of the day to day of your business. Um, oftentimes, mm-hmm. when I work with clients, I do a lot of team management as an OBM, and I do a lot of planning and projects. You could almost clump like team management, project management, planning, all mm-hmm. of those different pieces that while they are crucial to the business, they aren't actually like giving life to your vision, if you will. Right. So really like an OBM can kind of take over the inside day-to-day management and allow you mm-hmm. to really focus on bringing your vision to life, bringing like living out your mission of your business, really connecting with your current clients and also potential new clients because you if you're the face of your business it that's where you need to shine and that's where right. you know so so figuring out like what that looks like and then the OBM supporting kind of the back end of and the behind the scenes if you will no i think that makes sense because as interior designers a lot of the individuals that i interact with and a lot of our audience They might be a solopreneur or they have a small team or something along that line. And what I teach and what I preach is that you're the face of the business. So you are the one driving the majority of the sales. So you're out there doing business development, but you're also the design genius. So where do we wait? Where do we make our money? It's not managing, you know, the business. It is doing the design and doing the sales and so forth, but you can't ignore the rest. Right. And yeah. expect to say to stay sustainable. So there's this one thing I love saying, and it's like, you aren't meant to be an expert in all the areas of your business because right. there are so many pieces of your business that I think it's interesting too. A lot of times, you know, we all, we start our business and we're really excited to do the fun part, if you will, of our yes. business. But then there's <laughs> yep. so many of these other pieces that like you didn't even know existed that you have to do. <laughs> Oh and my word. It's so, so like, true. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I, where I thrive of like the idea of like, you're not meant to be an expert in those areas. And there are experts out there for those areas, you know, to make sure mm-hmm. that someone's managing your project. Somebody is, you know, following up on those orders for you. Someone's placing orders for you because once you do the design and you have, have your client selection and all that, you don't need to sit on your computer and order stuff. Like somebody else can do that for you. So figuring out like those mundane, if you will, or non-revenue generating type stuff and getting that off Mm -hmm. your plate allows you to focus on the design and business, business development more and more and more. Absolutely. Hey y'all, as my interior design business grew, there were some struggles that quickly surfaced. It was balancing management just all of the things that come together and especially when it came to consolidating my marketing efforts, my client relationship management, social media planning, website building, all the things. I felt like Dr. Frankenstein just trying to tie all of these things together and it didn't really come out very pretty. I thought it would be great if I could find something that would bring everything together into one place. And I believe I have found it. The support of Sidemark. Growing your interior design business has never been easier. It will be available this spring. Sidemark is an all new, all in one software that organizes sales, marketing and business services all in one convenient location. By signing up for Sidemark, 
you too can get access to all of the essential tools needed to help your business succeed with features such as a built-in website builder, a custom sales pipeline, email marketing, client relationship management, scheduling on a calendar, and more. This is going to expand your interior design business and make it a breeze. Go online now to join the waitlist at mysidemark.com. You will receive 10% off your first year and get notified of all of the new and exciting updates yet to come. Visit mysidemark.com to start your journey towards successful business growth without the stress and join mysidemark.com today. You won't be sorry. So when you're doing your online business management or as you are encouraging others to use ClickUp, what have you replaced? Like what other platforms have you replaced with ClickUp? So I replaced Google Drive. That's the biggest one right. probably. Uh-huh. But I've also I've also replaced like the need of meetings. So I'm not in, you know, a ton of meetings every single week with my team because right. ClickUp has allowed us to really work in there. I've also replaced, you know, Google Sheets. ClickUp has the capability of some formulas and has different views to work off of. So um, it also has time tracking. So you can also, if your mm. team is time tracking, you can eliminate right. whatever tool you're using because it's inside ClickUp. So it has all of these pieces that it's interesting because you don't you don't realize how many different places that you are going to do something until you start seeing like, oh, ClickUp can do this. ClickUp can do that. So like our team as a whole, we don't really have meetings, we have um, forms. So my team members on every Monday morning, they fill out a little form. They tell me what they're working on for that week. If they Mm -hmm. need any support from me, I reply to it if needed. And then on Friday, they do a little reflection and say like, hey, this is my biggest win. And I got these things done and, and I didn't get this, but this is why. And just those different pieces. And it allows us because I swear every time I get on what should be a 20 or 30 minute call, it goes into like an hour. (laughs) <laughs> right? Uh, yes. Time, you know? So it's replaced other pieces of that, but it's also replaced like my, the amount of brain mental energy that I'm spending in my day to day because mm-hmm. there's automations in ClickUp. So ClickUp has allowed us as a team to be able to do the task. And then basically if there's another person involved, it hands it off and ClickUp just alerts them ah, nice. as needed. Right. And so there's, we use a lot of automations. We even use something where we're repurposing our marketing content and ClickUp actually creates the task for us. So we type in an idea and ClickUp will create the task for us, put a little template in there, assign it to the correct person. So the amount, like if you're thinking about that and say you are, say you are posting five days a week on social media, right? So that's at least 20 posts a month, roughly. You know how much Mm -hmm. time it would take me to like create the task and put the template in there and assign it? It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start to add up all those pieces, that's where like you start just mentally exhausted. Like, cause you spent the whole day planning out your content when you can automate a huge piece of that. So ClickUp replaces lots of things, but also kind of non-tangible things, if you will, like, like time or mental energy, right? which has been mental energy. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, and it's true because when when we're in the middle of running our business, not only do we have all of the business details, tasks, deadlines, timelines, all the things in our head, but then we also have the design side, dealing with the clients and dealing with the vendors and dealing with the selections and all of those details. So anytime it's possible to simplify and streamline, I think taking advantage of any tool is imperative. And it sounds like ClickUp just has a lot of muscle behind it. uh, It does, yeah. Take away from using our own muscle, just replacing it. Right. And, you know, I've worked with a few interior designers and I think all of them that I've worked with uses Ivy, the the CRM type thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's great. And Ivy is great for like the invoicing and the project or the um, like product selection and stuff. But what's cool is once the client like selects their products, 
you then have to order it. You then have to follow up, you know, if, mm-hmm. if the shipping date comes and it's not shipped or you have to follow up on how much the freight is, all these different right, all pieces, of the procurement. right. That, that Ivy doesn't take care of. And then get this, you can actually um, send out emails directly from mm-hmm. ClickUp. So I, you can like pull up a thing and says, like, if you get a notification that something has shipped, you can send off an, a quick email to your client directly inside right. ClickUp, like, Hey, this is shipped. Yay. You know, or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, or expect this to be there. Those things. So you're not going into your email and then also right. getting distracted because your email is a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. That, that's a, yeah, that's a beast. That yes. is a beast. Okay. So I understand how you can you can integrate it in some instances. Does it actually yeah. integrate with, what does ClickUp integrate with? ClickUp integrates um, directly with email, Slack. There are time tracking devices to create like uh, like Gusto and stuff. It will, it will connect mm-hmm. directly to there. It integrates with Zoom. I think there's a couple others where it directly integrates. But the okay. main thing that you can do is utilize Zapier And that will connect a lot of pieces. So that will connect like, you know, if, if we're talking about Ivy, for instance, you can connect something where when a project is created, you create the folder and template in ClickUp and, you know, get the the stuff kind of set up for working with that client Mm -hmm. and all the info will, you can have it all kind of just move over to ClickUp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just, and I'm just, I'm trying to picture it without seeing a screen, which is also what our listeners are doing. Right. (laughs) Does it have like a CRM in it? So I say no, but this is a, this is up for debate (laughs) with a lot of (laughs) ClickUp experts. It depends on who you ask. And I think the biggest piece is determining what a CRM means to you because I say no, because ClickUp does not have the capability of sending out invoices or contracts. It doesn't have a scheduler. And those are all the pieces Mm -hmm. that you would have to get a separate tool for, right? Or separate platform for. Where if you you define a CRM as just tracking your current clients, past clients in like a little spreadsheet. Like a Rolodex. Right, Right. like a Rolodex, then sure, you could. So that's where the the debate is. And I think the biggest piece is like what's the definition of a CRM? <laughs> and for me, right. it's doing all those things for me. <laughs> it is. It's a customer, it's a client relationship, a customer, or client relationship manager. And that right. means it's a relationship back and forth where you can communicate. So you've got the email and the portal and stuff like that, but you don't have the capability of sending out like the invoices and, and things along that line. Right. What about social media? Does it tie in with any sort of like email platform or social media planning, things along that line? So um, you don't have to integrate anything because I do all of my marketing inside ClickUp and that's because they have um, a lot of different views. So we use calendar view Mm -hmm. for our marketing and we can literally like drag and drop tasks and plan everything out Mm -hmm. into this calendar. And then we mainly post video. So Instagram actually just came out with this awesome like in-house scheduler. So we can just schedule stuff directly in Instagram now. So that's what we do because since it's video, you can't uh, not, there's not really any scheduler that will post a video with the correct audio and all these, it's like a long process. So we use the calendar piece of it. We use the Instagram, but there's a lot of back and forth during that process and ClickUp does all of it. So um, like my marketing person that helps me out, she will plan out all the content. She finds all the audios. Everything's in ClickUp for me. So every other Monday, I can open it up and record the videos that she needs, all the raw stuff. Mm-hmm. I dump mm-hmm. it back into ClickUp and then she edits and schedules and does all the rest of it. All of her things. So it's a great, com- yeah, that's a great communication. So interesting. It has, it sounds like it is very robust. It is and very robust. Like you said, takes 10 hours a week off of your life. No, it wait, does. not off your life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it gives you 10 hours back to your life. Let's yes, just clarify yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, One thing hilarious. I want to mention too, so you mentioned how Trello is like really simplistic. And what's mm-hmm. really cool about ClickUp is you can use it that simplistically. 
but you can also use it as robust as I'm talking about. So that is why it's my favorite because you can literally start with just like, it has a board view, just like Trello. So you can literally start Uh with just your tasks on a board Mm -hmm. and you do them Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's Mm -hmm. it, you know? Yep. And then you can you can go as far as I have where I have integrations going and automations and emails and you know forms and all this crazy stuff. So yeah, that's, that's my favorite thing is you can use oh, it that at is, any level. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, because I know that um one of my former students in my interior design business bakery, she was a huge clickup fan. And so that's where I was first kind of introduced to it because I've been I moved from Trello to Asana and I love me some Asana. <laughs> but she was talking about some of the things that she could do and streamline through ClickUp. And so it's one of those, as a business owner, there's always that next shiny thing. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to really just stay focused on Asana right now, but I keep hearing, and I'm so glad to have the time to you know, chat with you because even though there's the, always the shiny object syndrome, if it can save you that much time, hell to the yeah, you need to explore a lot of things. Yeah. But it's all about timing too. It is. And you know, that's where I also say that the most important project management tool is the one that you're going to use. And yes, if I you are, if you are doing really well in Asana and you are not unhappy with Asana, keep using it. You know, I'm but know that there's also something out there that when you outgrow it, right. Or yes, need because something different. You will outgrow Asana. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know, you will. I would say, I would say, in in terms of how robust project management tools are, it goes from Trello, Asana to ClickUp. Right. That's kind of the. And I see a lot of people go that direct path um, mm-hmm. where they move into Asana and they're like, "Oh wow, this is awesome!" And then they get team members and they're like, "Oh my gosh, this is not enough for me. I need you know X Y Z." Or and then they move on right. to ClickUp. So, but I mean don't feel like just because everyone else is doing it, you have to do it either. You know, I think it's important to, I guess, kind of put your blinders on sometimes, you know, and if it's working for you and there's not this crazy, like overwhelm of this is a mess and it's not working, Mm -hmm. then keep doing it. Right. And I thank you. I I appreciate you saying that because I think that as I have myself, as I've become a more sophisticated business owner, I can put those blinders on. Yeah. Years ago, it was also like, what else is there? What else is there? What else is there? I should try this. I should try that. I should do this. I should do that. And it's like, no, you find what works and you hold on to it for as long as you can. And then when you do outgrow it, then you're ready to move on. Yeah. Imagine trying to bake a cake without a recipe. You kind of know what the ingredients are, but you don't know how to put it all together. After lots of hard work and trying different combinations, all you are left with is a sticky situation and a stomach ache. Babe, running an interior design business can feel exactly that same way. That is why I created the Interior Design Business Bakery. This is a program that teaches you how to bake your interior design business cake and eat it too. If you don't want to figure out the hard way and you want guidance to follow, a recipe that has already been vetted, someone that has already been there and done it and will help you do it too, then check out the year-long mentorship and coaching program, The Interior Design Business Bakery. If your interior design business revenue is below 300000 or if you're struggling to make a profit and keep your sanity, this is the only program for you. You can find that information at Designed for the Creative Mind dot com forward slash business dash bakery. Check it out. You won't regret it. And, you know, it's interesting too, because I would agree with you, you know, in the past where you're also maybe like not knowingly, but searching for the thing that's going to like fix it all or like make you millions of dollars, <laughs> you know, like those, yeah. yes, the magic <laughs> pill. Yeah. And so you're jumping the from magic this, this and this and, <laughs> yes. and the magic is you just have to pick one <laughs> and you just yes, have to use that one thing. Consistent. <laughs> yes. It's so exactly. true. <laughs> it is so true. It's like, you can't buy a gym membership and not show up and think you're going to get stronger. 
Right. Yes, exactly. You got to go. So <laughs> you got to go. You got to lift those weights. You got to tear those muscles. So yeah, that is so true. And then just like so many other things, when you outgrow it, you, you know what your options are. Mm-hmm. And I, I love, yeah. like, I honestly, I might've clicked, no pun intended, clicked over to click up once or twice when I first had heard about it and then just put my blinders on. So I really love hearing from you, like how you're using it in regular day to day. And especially with, with the interior design, you know, if y'all are on Ivy, I think that's, that's a great solution. Yeah. To be able, because that was one thing we, we had tried Ivy and the the procurement is not great. It's yeah. I'm, I'm trying to keep my words soft here. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. We had to find another solution. It was not click up, but we found another, another option to go down that path, but we still use Asana. And like you said, a project management tool is invaluable. Right. Well, and and also remembering that you are supposed to have like a tech stack, if you will. So you are supposed to have a CRM. You are supposed Mm -hmm. to have a project management tool. You are supposed to have an area to, you know, have Zoom meetings or, you know, video meetings. Right. So like, it's important to remember that you, you shouldn't just always be looking for the one tool that literally will replace everything. Uh Uh-huh. Because ClickUp for me is hands down the best project management tool I've ever seen. I will never use it as a CRM though, ever. Right. And that, yeah, it's not one size fits all. Right. And yeah, not so, all think, yeah, you can't, you can't answer all solutions with one platform. Right. Exactly. So but remember, can you imagine you need if we could invent that. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> yes. I mean, we could rule the world. Technically ClickUp could do it, but I don't want to have to pay three other platforms and then also Zapier and connect everything. And then when a connection doesn't work or breaks or whatever, like, I don't want to deal with all that. I want to just get a CRM Mm -hmm. that just goes through our little workflow and sends off the invoice when it's supposed to and the contract and, you know, schedule (laughs) the appointments, you know, I don't want to have to worry about all of it. I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it is. It's just nice when it can be solidly like just consolidated. Yeah, Yeah. I love this. I love this. So Casey, what I want to do is I love to talk about all things business related, and this just really floats my boat, but I also like to have a little bit of fun. So <laughs> what I want to do is dive into this next section, which is a Q&A sesh where the audience can get to know you a little bit better. And then at the end, I want to circle back around to talk a little bit about a little bit more about you and some of the services that you offer and how people can, can connect with you. So yeah, are you ready for a little bit of fun first? I am. All right. Well, here we go. Rapid fire. Just the first thing that comes off the top of your head. All right. All right. If you won $10 million tomorrow, Casey, what would you spend it on? Uh, I would pay off our house (laughs) Um, and buy another house. (laughs) There you go. And then I literally have no idea what I do with the rest. (laughs) But that's okay. Isn't it fun to dream? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Cookies and cream. Mm, yummy. If you couldn't be remember, if you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Uh, helping people save time in their business. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what um, I was going to ask you what your favorite productivity hack is. So let me ask you, what's your favorite productivity hack other than ClickUp? Ooh, timers. Oh, like setting timers and working focused work. Yes, 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 yes. Do you have children? I do not. We're trying. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's always fun. Um, <laughs> when like the timer has saved us some sanity because we use it. I have a four and a half year old and I'll tell her, okay, Genevieve, in two minutes, we're going to go brush your teeth. And then when the timer goes off, it's so much easier than me saying it's time to go brush your teeth right now because she already knows what's going on. So there's yeah. a productivity hack for you. When the time comes, <laughs> when we have kids, yes, I'm going to yes. use it. <laughs> it. It works. It works really well. Okay. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ooh, teleporting. Oh, uh, yeah. Amen. I could just that. be wherever I want to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And not have to deal with the lines and everything. Right. <laughs> what did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh my gosh. This answer is so fun. I wanted to be this. <laughs> Really? I have to tell you, yes. Can, can I, can I tell this story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> when I was growing up, um, like six, seven, eight years old, my stepdad had his own business and I would go into, my mom kind of ran the books and, and all that kind of stuff. And I would right. go in there and I would help her with paperwork. <laughs> and oh, then, how fun. And then, and uh, like, she would let me, she would let me like write checks as I got, you know, a little older and, and obviously she'd mm-hmm. make sure they were correct, but you know, <laughs> I, I would do not too I many would, zeros. Right. <laughs> and I would do, you know, like I would do all the envelopes and the stamps and, you know, all those things. And then in high school, I used to daydream about being in this admin position of like an office manager, if you will, of, you know, taking care of paperwork and helping, you know, all of the ins and outs of the business and, and all that kind of stuff. And then I was an office manager for 10 years and then I started my business. So it's literally evolved since I was like six or seven years old. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. How neat is that? Yeah. I love it. You are truly where you, where you're supposed to be. I know. So fun. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. And I'm on my third career. So God bless you for having a passion that you were able to pursue and like blossom. I will, I will say when I was, I think maybe preteen or teenager, I wanted to be um, a crop duster. Do you know what that is? Like uh, the helicopters that spray <laughs> fields. Okay. So, so <laughs> I grew up around planes. Uh, my stepdad has, has airplanes. And so we would fly a lot. And so it was very much in our, our nature to be around all that kind of stuff. Right. And so I wanted to do that, but my mom told me no, cause it was too dangerous. <laughs> 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 that's quite a big difference between I the know. two I know that I is know. <laughs> too funny <laughs> oh my gosh that's a great story that is a really great story okay what scares the hell out of you other than flying crop dusting <laughs> no it doesn't scare me it scared my mom, scared um, mom. <laughs> um snakes and sharks are my two greatest fears that would do it yeah and they yeah. don't live together <laughs> no, no, they do not. <laughs> well, so Casey, what would you pick for your last meal? Oh my goodness. My last meal. Well, this is a hard one. Mm-hmm. The first thing that came to mind was popcorn, which I don't think that's a meal, even though sometimes I eat it as a meal. <laughs> uh-huh. <Yum. laughs> like movie theater popcorn, you know? Um, oh. But also I love Chinese food. So it'd probably be some sort of Chinese, like some chow mein and I don't know, beef and broccoli and sweet and sour chicken. I don't know, just something. I love Chinese food. I don't know, but I'm getting hungry just listening to it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that sounds so good. Um, Okay, last one. Very important. Okay. Is your belly button any or outie? Any. (laughs) (laughs) That one's fun. (laughs) All right. I just, I, I, I love talking about all the business stuff, but I think it's also just so f- interesting to get other people's perspectives and, and thoughts along that line. Yeah. So, so Casey, tell the audience about how they can work with you, how they, and, and then how they can connect with you, like yeah. social media handles and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So I, work in ClickUp. So to work with me, I have a various options. We have a VIP day where I come in for one day and put together some systems for you. We have an entire week where we work together in ClickUp. I also have templates and a course all around ClickUp. So literally everything ClickUp you can think of, I've got it. And then to find me, I hang out on Instagram and my handle is my name, Casey Ackerman, but I would love for you to come follow me, say hello. Um, If you want to pop over to my website, that's also CaseyAckerman.com. Thank you so much. And that's Casey with a K, K K-A-C-I, Ackerman. And I will also make sure that all of those details are listed in the show notes so that our audience can reference that. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. And for those of you who can benefit, from even more resources surrounding the business of running your interior design business, join the growing community on my Facebook private group page. It's called the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. And yeah, 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 I know it's Facebook. It's not everybody's favorite platform, but it's the best place that you can have a private group. I go live once a week and we have a lot of support and interaction. So come over and join me. So thank you very much for listening. Casey, thank you for being here. And until next time. Hey, y'all. 
If you love the show and find it useful, I would really appreciate it if you would share with your friends and followers. And if you like what you're hearing, want to put a face with a name and get even more business advice, then join me in my Facebook group, The Interior Designers Business Launchpad. Yeah, I know it's Facebook, but just come on in for the training and then leave without scrolling your feed. It's fun. I promise you'll enjoy it. And finally, I hear it's good for business to get ratings on your podcasts. So please drop yours on whatever platform you use to listen to this. We're all about community over competition. So let's work on elevating our industry one designer at a time. See you next time.